Save for a few fringe, quirky vehicles that have made it into production, the majority of vehicles on sale today are pretty similar in their design and design execution. Sure, they may have different body panels or different interiors, but they all follow the same basic design that you could probably draw when you were three. An elongated box with a bubble on top for the cab with wheels at each corner. While that design works for layout of an internal combustion engine vehicle, it's certainly not the most streamlined shape out there. And over the years, we've seen several different companies try to take on the conventional automotive design and challenge it, building streamlined vehicles with very low coefficients of drag that offer incredible efficiency. One such vehicle was the Aptera, a three-wheeled, two-seat car from Aptera Motors that looked, well, more like an airplane without wings than a traditional car. It managed a drag coefficient of just 0.11 and made use of things like a top-mounted rear camera to reduce drag. Ten years ago, it was all the rage, enjoying some pretty significant time in the spotlight between the founding of Aptera Motors in 2006 and its untimely demise in 2011. But now it's back and, says its creators, is better than ever before, managing 1,609 kilometres on a single charge of its 100 kilowatt hour battery pack variant. If that sounds impossibly crazy, you would be forgiven for thinking so. But to help you understand where this car might go in the future, let's take a look back at its past. The original Aptera 2 series, predating the Tesla Model S, was said to use less than half the energy to move itself along at 55 miles per hour than a Tesla Roadster. Its looks were even futuristic enough for it to get a short cameo appearance in the J.J. Abrams-directed Star Trek film that introduced us all to the Kelvin timeline. Originally, Aptera Motors had planned to offer the Aptera 2 Series in two different variants, a plug-in series hybrid version called the Aptera 2H and an all-electric variant called the 2E. The latter was designed to have a range of around 190 km per charge, while the former was said to manage closer to 900 km on a full charge and a fuel fuel tank. In an age where the US government and nonprofits such as the XPRIZE Foundation were actively funding and encouraging the development of lower emissions alternative fueled vehicles, Aptera was one of many vehicles at the time. It was one of the XPRIZE entrants. Its all electric 2E competed in the automotive XPRIZE, a quest to find vehicles capable of managing at least 100 miles per gallon equivalent while also meeting the required safety standards and mass market capability. While it made it to the final of the Automotive X Prize, it did lose out to some of its rivals. That loss and its prior failure to gain government approval for the Advanced Technology Vehicle Manufacturing Loan Program started what felt like the end of Aptera's journey. In mid-2011, just as cars like the Nissan Leaf were hitting dealer lots, Aptera returned customer deposits and announced it would be going out of business. A Chinese automaker purchased Aptera's intellectual property from its creditors and, save for some continued promise to revise the company as a Chinese-owned subsidiary, that was that. So how, you may ask, are we back here today talking about this unique vehicle again? Well, in the intervening years, Aptera's original founders have been able to buy back the IP for their vehicle, and then they've been busy re-engineering it with a decade of advancements in electric vehicle technology, manufacturing and computer technology in mind. The result is a car as announced this week, as reborn on the WeFunder website. The goal of Aptera? To raise just over $1 million as part of a $2.5 million fundraising stock target. So what about the car? What's different? Well, according to the reborn Aptera Motors, the refined design now includes in-wheel motors, likely one for each wheel, we're told, with a range of battery pack options from 40 kilowatt hours all the way up to 100 kilowatt hours. Each, says Aptera, will be able to achieve less than 62 watt hours per kilometer. And it's that efficiency made possible thanks to the vehicle's fantastic streamlined shape, low weight and low coefficient of drag, which makes the claimed 1600 kilometer range at least theoretically possible. Also promised as standard is quick charging, either CCS or CHAdeMO. 
Because the car sips electricity, Aptera's team say recharging will be incredibly quick in terms of miles or kilometers per hour, even if the kilowatt charging rate is relatively slow. It might look the same then, but it's really different underneath. But that's not the challenge. The real challenge is if Aptera will get the attention I think it deserves, especially in a world where people demand four seats as a minimum and pickups and SUVs rule the world with increasing dominance. Well, I think it's hard to envisage Aptera gaining anything like a huge market share outside of the marketplaces where other electric cars can commonly be found. In a world where emissions regulations are being rolled back in some places rather than tightened, it seems even less likely that Aptera will capture anyone's imagination. Personally, I am a fan of Aptera's unique and innovative design language. I think it's going to be safer than a motorcycle for sure, and it could also dramatically improve the health of millions of people by reducing energy usage and thus emissions. I want it to get all of the attention and to succeed where it previously failed. But will this better, more efficient, longer-legged version catch on? That's where my doubt sets in. In an ideal world, where people are open to new ideas and new concepts, then yes, yes, absolutely. But in today's society, I remain very doubtful. I hope I'm proven wrong. That's it. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you next time.